Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to JKS Tech Lab. Today, I want to show you how to set up a SAML connection and then also show you how you can inspect your SAML search and just kind of see what type of information is in there. And we're going to do it based off of a user that is set up inside of Ping One. So let me just show you real quick. We're going to set it up in Ping Federate, but I want to set it up based off of a user that's inside of Ping One. So uh, we're going to use this user here test user so this is the information i want to pull i want to pull you know first name last name maybe this test fake email username and maybe title um so basically i'm, I'm going to mimic pulling this information um out of ping one and sending it to an application so the application that i'm gonna test this with let me show you so rsa has a saml basically a SAML test application that you can use to kind of make sure your IDP is set up correctly. And we want to test it based on a um, IDP initiated. So the link is going to come from Ping Federate and that's how the user is going to be in there. So what you would do if you wanted to test this for yourself is just go click whichever one you want. We're going to do IDP initiated and download the metadata. So I'll just uh, actually say do a save as on this metadata. Um, so I'm going to save as and just save it to my desktop. And this metadata will have all the information we need for this application. So a lot of times you'll be doing a lot of exchanging of metadata. You'll get the metadata from your service provider, which is the application. It'll have their entity ID. It'll have the redirection URLs, different stuff like that. If there's a certificate that is needed from them, it'll be inside the metadata. So if you need to encrypt your assertions or anything like that, that'll be there as well. But this is just a really basic one so we can see that our IDP is set up correctly and also see what type of information is being sent. So um, this is gonna be in my Ping Federate server. And let me just sign back in. Which one did I use for this? All right, so what I wanna do is go to applications and this is a sp connection so this is a service provider so and i'm gonna just go and take through the process so we're going to create a connection we're not using a template we'll go next uh, this is browser sso we're using saml 2.0 same here browser sso then once you get here, if you do have a file, a metadata file, you can pull it from here. If you set up a metadata URL, you can use that as well. We're gonna do a file. So I'm just go find that file on my desktop. And we can see the name of it. We click next. It's gonna say this is unsigned. It's telling you the entity ID. So we know it's the IAM showcase. So I'm gonna just go through the process. We can see the information here. So there's the entity ID, connection name. You can change the connection name if you want to be whatever you want but normally um since you got this from the sp provider you can you know be rest assured that this information is going to be correct but this part doesn't really matter this is basically what do you want it to be identified as so if i didn't want it to be identified as that i can change this name but this is the most important part because this is the actual entity id this is what that that service provider is expecting um, on their side here's the base url so this is used you may not get this all the time but this is used so that when you go and set up your um, assertion consumer service urls then you can just use like directories instead of full urls and you'll see that when we get to it then you can fill in the rest of this if you want to but again this is really basic so i'm just leave all this stuff the, the same um, default and then we're going to go in configure browser sso we're going to do idp initiated because that's what we're setting up uh, if we were setting up an SP initiated, we would click this here. And also if we were doing single logout, we would click those, but we're not. So go next. And then for the assertion, this is where we're going to set up the information. So I'm going to say standard. And by default, it's going to send the subject, but we're going to add some other stuff. So like I said, I want to do um, uh, first name. And this is just here because when you once you start setting up stuff inside the ping federate it kind of remembers some of the things that you put in so no matter what type of connections that you're setting up if you're using stuff like first name last name on it you know normal stuff it'll be there but anyway so i'm gonna do first name i'm gonna also do last name let's do 
and I'll just do unspecified because it, it doesn't matter. We're just going to map it. Um, yeah, let's pull the title and let's do a let's do email because I'm going to set the username to be the subject. So we'll do email there. So we want to pull all of this. Basically, this is all the stuff that we want to pull out of ping one to send to our application. So we're going to click next. Now we need to map it. Either you can map it to an authentication policy, which we don't have set up. I'm gonna map this directly to a basic adapter, which is just a basic web form adapter. But the web form adapter is set to use ping one as um, a data store. So it's gonna be able to pull that information when we authenticate against it. So I'm gonna just click here and find my adapter, which is my basic web form. And we can see right here, this is what's in that adapter contract. So this is all the stuff that's coming over from ping one in this adapter so i'm going to click next we're going to say use only the adapter contract and now we're going to map it so i'm going to map it from the adapter for the subject i want this to be the username from the adapter for the email i want to pull email and as you can see you can do different stuff so if you want to do stuff based on context um, you can see some of the context that you would get or if you need to do just a, like a, a agonal expression or something, you can do that. If you don't want it to be mapped at all, you can do that. And if you want to send a specific text, like say everybody that comes through here is going to have this identifier. Maybe it's an employee identifier or an account identifier that's going to be the same for everybody. You can just do text. But we want it to pull directly from the adapter. So remember, um, it depends on what your adapter sends this over as. So we're we're saying first name, but the adapter has uh, given names. So we need to make sure we, we pull that. Uh, again, same with last name. This is going to be family name and then title should be title. So we're going to go here. So this is how we this is how we set it up. Um, and I did do a video on kind of setting up the adapter and integrating ping one. If you want to check that out, um, just so you can kind of see how that part was set up. But anyway, so we're going to go next. We don't need any issuance criteria. This would be uh, if we want to have certain criteria for, say, say we want to limit it to people that are in a specific group or have some type of specific attribute it has to you know fulfill this information before it can actually go forward so we could do something like uh say from the adapter uh, maybe you know email has to contain something specific <clears throat> or you know whatever it could be like member member of if we have member of in there so say you can be like from the adapter contract if the group contains this then they're good or if the group does not contain this they're good so this is basically like a like a something that they have to meet but we're not we're not going to do that for this one we don't need it but it can be useful depending on what you're trying to do for your certain configuration so it's going to give us a summary we're going to say done we're good we're going to say next it's going to give us another summary of all that we're going to say done we're going to say next and then for the protocol just going here and you can see because we had that metadata, it put in that endpoint URL. And this is what I was talking about for that um, that base URL. Since that base URL is, is set at the, the actual connection level, we don't have to put the full endpoint in here. We can just say, you know, this is the endpoint that it's going to get redirected to. It's going to append that to the base URL. So if we had more, you know, endpoints that we needed to set up, we can add them. But we don't need to do that here. So we're just going to click next. Um, always sign assertion so that means that within their metadata they want the assertion to be signed by the idp so that's good but that also means that they need to have your uh certificate and everything like that but anyway so you'll exchange that when you exchange metadata we're gonna go next we're gonna go next i'm gonna click done next it's gonna give me another summary then it's gonna take me to the next section which is gonna be um, our credentials you can see it's not configured. If I tried to go forward, it wouldn't let me because uh, the signature is required. The assertion needs to be signed. So this is my this is my certificate from my IDP. Um, like I said, in a normal situation, you would exchange this certificate. Either it's going to be in your metadata, or you can give them the certificate, you know, directly on its own, and they can import it. Um, since this is a test uh, SAML provider it just automatically trusts any idp that you set up with it because it's set up for testing but in a normal production situation you would exchange this information and they would have your certificate so we're going to say next 
it's showing you what it is we're going to say done and you can see right there we're going to say next and now you get a full um, summary of everything so you can see everything that's set up you can see the contract you can see the stuff that you're going to be sending what it's going to be mapping to you can see the endpoints and you can say save so now that we say save what i can do is use this idp initiated url which basically is um, my idp and then it's it's forcing that on authentication from the ping federate side so what i'm gonna do is pull this over because i can do this directly from the server but i want to copy it over here and just do it just so you can see so i'm gonna copy this link and also what i want to do is Put that in there i'm gonna start my saml tracer this allows us to inspect the saml information that gets sent in the transaction so um, very very useful tool if you're troubleshooting saml connections so so now i'm gonna just log in with that user and this is the user information from ping one so this is this is how they're going to log in and go this is just my test user and put this in I'm gonna say sign on, don't save. So this is a really, really dope um, application, man, because it really helps you kind of test your, your configuration. It helps you kind of test the, you know, the assertions, the attributes and everything you're sending. So based on what we set up for this configuration, this is mimicking what would be received by an application. So it's saying, okay, here's your first name, last name. Hello, you know, Joe Test. You can see that the subject is that username, Joe.test. You can see the way it's sent over. Um, you can see the format. And then again, here's all your attributes. So first name, Joe, title, because we pulled the title right there. There's that um, email that we put in there and the last name and more of the details. You can also look directly at the SAML. So if you want to see exactly what the assertion looks like, uh, if you're not used to looking at this stuff, it may look foreign, but trust me, like if you're, if you're dealing with this stuff on a day-to-day -day basis, you know exactly um, what you're looking at where to look so we can see, i know right here saml name id that's my subject if i look over here i can see it's in there so you can look at all this stuff and kind of see what's inside of your saml you can see here's the audience so i am showcase um yeah here's your attributes down here first name so if i scroll over here and look at the first name it's going to be in there i can see joe i can see title so basically saying here's your here's your attribute what format is it in and then it shows you exactly what it's sending over for that so you can see that directly here but if you're not using this application if you want to you know test this or kind of inspect this type of information for any um application that you're using that's where this comes in so saml tracer man is invaluable definitely definitely something you want to have if you're doing anything with idps sps sso federation anything like that because this shows you kind of what it goes through you can you can load this for definitely firefox and chrome um, i haven't tried it in edge but i definitely use it in firefox and chrome so you can see right here this is what we're interested in because it says saml so same type of stuff you can see kind of what path is taking the parameters this is the actual saml response and then that same thing right here it's kind of formatted a little bit better but you can see stuff like I can see the actual issuer so there's my issuer that that is sending the saml information i can see my signature values you see all that stuff and then you can see your attributes in there so again first name there's my first name you can see title titles right there email email there but what's really cool about this is if you go to summary it's even cleaner it just gives you everything you need right there really really valuable when you're troubleshooting your saml stuff when you're trying to see what is actually being sent when the person is logging in um so you know you can use this if you're working with a vendor and they're they're saying they're not receiving something or maybe you know the attributes that they're receiving isn't what they were expecting so you can say well this is the stuff that i'm sending over to you i'm sending the first name title email last name you know this is how it's coming over maybe i need to send you something else but you could show this and it really really helps when you're troubleshooting and then it's also fun to just look at and see like you can run this on you know your own um connections like maybe you're logging into something when, when something says log in with facebook or log in with google or log in with apple or you know some of those different things um even things like at&t email yahoo a lot of that stuff is using saml in the background so if you if you put this on and kind of log in you can kind of see the type of information that's being sent during your login what type of stuff are they sending are they sending your first name are they sending email you know all that different stuff so really cool um, really straightforward tool definitely these two 
uh, SAML tracer and the test um, SP provider, something that I personally use um, professionally all the time, just because it helps you kind of just see exactly what's being sent. It helps you test stuff out. So if there's certain expressions and things that I'm trying to test out, uh, maybe I need to send, you know, I need to pull, I don't know, group information or I need to do something with a user user name or maybe, you know, employee numbers or something like that. And I need to, you know, mess with some different code to kind of pull things out of whatever database that I'm pulling it out of for that user for that application. I can set it up in a test, uh, this test connection and kind of see what's going to be pulled over, what it's going to be, what it's going to look like to that application. Um, and then we can implement it before we try to implement stuff in production and stuff like that. So yeah, man, really, really great tools. Definitely suggest checking this out if you are involved with SSO at any type of level or a federation, or if you're doing anything with, you know, any type of IDP SP configurations. Uh, these are two invaluable tools to have: the RSA um, SAML test provider and uh, the actual SAML tracer extension for Chrome or Firefox. So yeah really really cool tool again just wanted to show you how to set that stuff up inside of pink federate so again you can see right there there it is there's the connection name and remember the connection name can be whatever you want but the entity id has to be whatever that that server provider is expecting it to be sometimes you will get a base url sometimes you won't if you don't have this base url then when you go to set up your assumer um, assertion consumer url you're gonna have to put the full URL in. So um, really straightforward. I mean, Ping Federate um, pretty much just takes you through the entire process of, you know, when you're setting this stuff up. And most IDPs are really similar in terms of the information. It's just, you know, maybe the screens are gonna look different, um, but the type of information that you're gonna be dealing with across IDPs is the same. You're always gonna be dealing with entity IDs, base URLs, you know, you're probably gonna have some type of connection name. You know, a lot of this information is gonna be the same and, most of the time, if I'm troubleshooting a connection, I'll just go directly to this this um, activation summary page so I can see exactly what's going on. So they'd be like, hey, are you sending over phone number? No, I'm, I'm not sending phone number. You didn't request that. OK, can you go add that? Sure. And in Ping Feder, you can just go to any one of these. So if I wanted to change this contract to, to send something else, I would go directly to that section and add it in here and say, yeah, I want to start sending phone number or something like that. So, um, yeah, just wanted to share that for those that are interested to see kind of how how you're mapping and making these connections, these SAML connections on your IDP and stuff like that. Um, to me, it's, it's fun just setting this stuff up troubleshooting it you know making sure that people are getting access to what they need um, a lot of times you know when you're doing this type of integration in live environments you're going to be you know the the actual attributes right here are very important you know because that's how people are going to get access to you know whatever applications so if if you're sending email say you know for this sample subject maybe it needs to be an email format it needs to be email address so you would make sure you want to change that here and send the email address instead of the username maybe they're expecting first name maybe they're expecting you know a department name or something like that you can quickly troubleshoot that and see what you're doing um, based on what you have set up in your idp and then using something like sample tracer or even testing it with something like you know this this test uh sample application so yeah, hopefully uh, this is interesting to those that are um, kind of looking at IAM or, you know, dealing with IAM or just kind of even trying to learn ping, ping federate, ping SSO, stuff like that. So, of course, if you got any questions, let me know. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Peace.